talking, uh, Cynthia was interested in. She goes, Pete, will you explain the difference to me between air mass thunderstorms and supercell thunderstorms? Uh, it has been on your mind lately. I know. I, I mean, thought about it all vacation long. When so. you were on that uh, cruise ship? On the cruise, yes. Where did you go? We went to um, Belize, uh, we went to Honduras and Mexico. Ooh, hmm. Wow, that's, yeah. a nice, that's a nice that's itinerary. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I that drove to Frisco one day. <laughs> I did. <laughs> now, I don't go up that far north, but I did go to well, Frisco. You've never personnel. been to Europe? For just a few minutes. We I haven't. talk about that. I have, I've been to Paris, Texas. Yeah. I have. Let just me show you this. Air mass versus <laughs> supercell <laughs> thunderstorms. Italy. Huh? Italy. Italy. I've, been, Italy. I've, been to, I, I've been to Italy. Don't laugh at me. So air mass versus supercell thunderstorms. We all know what air mass thunderstorms are. That's the pop-up stuff that we have in the summertime here in Texas, right? It's just kind of the heat, the moisture, the humidity, all that. We just have these pop-up thunderstorms. So let me walk you through the difference between air mass and supercell thunderstorms. And I'm doing this because we're transitioning out of the supercells all the all heck breaking loose over the last couple of months with the supercell thunderstorms. We're transitioning into a more summertime weather pattern, which is air mass thunderstorms. Now that doesn't mean we, we can't have the stray supercell when the ingredients are just right, but this is the season where we have more of our air mass thunderstorms across North Texas. So what's an air mass thunderstorm? Well, they typically form in warm, moist air masses. Uh, in the absence of strong wind shear. So that's a good thing. And they don't last long, maybe an hour or so, then they just start to fizzle out. They usually lack rotation and they typically, they're not severe. So there are winds of 30, 40, maybe up to 50 miles an hour with some pea sized hail. That's a typical air mass thunderstorm. So some brief heavy rain, lightning, some small hail and some gusty winds are possible. Now, when we talk about supercell thunderstorms, and you can see what it's doing here in this neighborhood. Look at the hail that's falling. Wait until you see the tornado in just a second. But they develop in environments with strong wind shear and significant instability. Long live. They last a long time, several hours or more. Those are supercell thunderstorms. They can have a rotating updraft. That's called a mesocyclone and a more complex structure than air mass thunderstorms and severe weather. You get all modes of severe weather with these. You can have your baseball, your softball size hail, your wind gusts, those hurricane wind gusts that we saw with those storms that moved through uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And then you can also have the strong tornadoes like this one right here. So there you go. Air mass and supercell thunderstorms. I've never been so happy since 2015 was the last time we had a busy spring like this. Never been so happy to transition into air mass thunderstorm season and out of supercell season.